I think we're going live. It'll go live in a second. There we go. Good morning. I'm Matt and welcome to today's RC Coffee Chat Extended Edition. I've got two cups of coffee here this morning because I've got a funny feeling today's going to be a bit of a long one for you. Now, what have we got on the topics list for you this morning? And by the by the way, those of you listening in live, do let us know if the audio is good. That'd be uh, very much appreciated. So, what have we got in the topics list for today? Number one is a stupidity button. <laughs> you may have seen this a couple of days ago. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Oh yeah, a bit of sad news. The Tower Pro servos are no more. Uh, the cheapo cheap ones from Banggood uh, apparently are no longer Tower Pro ones. Find out about that in more detail in a few moments. Uh, Hobby King being less than perfect. I did write shite, but I thought that was inappropriate. Uh, we've got a mini review on the, uh, like a proper now review. Now I've had it for a while and it's been out and flown. And you can tell I've flown it because we don't have a motor on the back anymore. And there's a big love bite out there. Uh, we've got a mini review on the Reptile S670. And also a curiosity if see if Banggood have posted my one star review uh, on that model yet or not. Uh, let's have a quick look at your chat. Uh, loud and clear, brilliant. Thank you, Brad. Do appreciate that. And by the way, as you can see on the uh, right hand side of your screen, which is my left, which is very weird, uh, on your right hand side of your screen, there is a live chat going along with today's RC Coffee Chat. If you are in live this morning, do say howdy. As you can see, it's quite busy down there already this morning. Uh, we've been having a right chit chat beforehand. Uh, and you can pass on your judgment and feedback on anything which we cover uh, in today's RC Coffee Chat. And remember, if, you, if you've not caught the live version, don't panic. If you've got any questions or comments, you can ask those in the comments section underneath this video. Right, coming back onto topic, what else are we going to be covering today? Uh, Tom Top and RC moment, uh, Moments caught red-handed skanking videos. Uh, it's a bit of a curious one, to say the least. Uh, those of you which are waiting for the Nano Talon to come out as a kit... It's come out as a kit, but it ain't. We'll get to that one as well. Oh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. We will find out who was the winner of the giveaway in the Facebook group as well this morning. Uh, there is a fat Munter in the EU warehouse which got bought yesterday, and fingers crossed is on the way to me today. Uh, oh, there's some new goggles out as well. The 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 Ishin. Um, remember when these first came out, the EV 100s. I said chances are they're bringing out a second version, which hopefully they'll employ everything which they learned in the first one. Uh, and boy, have they! You have dual dual diversity. What that one out? That's a bit of a uh, number one is a bit of a gobble, but we'll take a look at those. Oh yeah, run cam fried mace uh, as well. We'll take a look at that as well. Oh, and totally off topic. If you are looking for a a retro gaming system for Christmas I can give you well you'll find out about that one like, totally off topic but very very cool I've got, I've got to say that one me and the kids have been playing it loads right uh, oh and of course we've got what's on the workbench shout out corner and things like that as well right so let's get into topic number one and good morning everybody who is on and happy unbirthday uh, un uh, Elijah by the way. Uh, so anyway, coming back onto the topic, uh, the Gearbest, uh, I've, I've been after this little Hunter model. I'll see if I can get up on a, on a different screen uh, and I'll show you the model, which I'm personally waiting for because it does kind of look cool, to be honest. Oh, look at that. That's disappeared off their website now. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I've been waiting for this little Delta wing to turn up. This one here. That one there, I'll stick that in the beginning. I've been waiting for that little wing to turn up. And uh, the thing is, is that, oh, you can't see it. Let me turn my head off. Apologies. Uh, I've turned me off. There we go. Let's get the, oh, why don't I do that? That's probably better, isn't it? Uh, right, so I've been waiting for this little hunter wing to, to turn out because we spoke about it in the last RC Coffee Chat. And by, by the way, apologies for missing last week's RC Coffee Chat. Uh, so anyway, coming back onto the topic. Uh, the, the, we've been waiting for the little FTC hunters to come out. We spoke about that on the, in the previous RC Coffee Chat, how they doctored the video for it. Uh, but that said, it does look pretty cool. And again, that's the expensive version. There is a kit version available. Uh, so it did appear on uh, Gearbest. So I went onto Gearbest and bought it. Uh, and uh, the annoying thing is, is that they've got this button called Dispatch Faster. And at the time which I bought it, there was no mention of a delay in the order and things like that. So we wrote a script to keep pressing the button. Uh, saying dispatch faster because why would you not want your order dispatched as fast as possible? Uh, I think this goes down in history. It's probably one of the world's most pointless buttons ever 
ever created. And if you've not seen that video, you will see my way of dealing with stupidity buttons like that. So uh, yeah, very, very frustrating uh, to say the least. Right, uh, next one, not Tower Pro servos anymore. Uh, so some, as many of you know that I've been a massive fan of the uh, MG90S servos from uh, Banggood. They are cheaper than the cheap Hobby King servos, but if you look closely, they have now been and doctored the image. Let me just put this point out on there. They've been and doctored the label on top of the servos, because I mean, like, it said Tara Pro there before, uh, and that's no longer on it. So, yeah, we shot them an email. Uh, and by the way, I'm re referring back into the Facebook group because that's where things have been going on over the past two weeks quite extensively. Uh, so we sh shot them a question. I finally got a reply a day or two later. I think it's like three days later, to be honest, something like that. Uh, and it says, uh, dear customer, uh, thanks for your email. For this item, I have confirmed with our supplier, they told me that it's not Tara Pro Karina. Uh, so I was a bit shocked by that um, because they've been sold as Tara Pro for so long. So maybe they've been in change suppliers. I don't know. I've ordered six more and we'll see if they're the same or different to the ones which I've got here. Um, if they are different, well, obviously that's going to be a disappointment. Uh, if they're the same, well, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> you know, I've broken a handful uh, due to misadventures. And um, yeah, still cheaper than the cheap Hobby King plastic one. So that's what I'm going to say on that one. Uh, but I've got some more on, the, uh, on order and we'll find out about that one shortly. Uh, topic number three. Now, frankly, this one pissed me off, okay? Uh, and I wonder if I can let's have a quick look. Yeah. Okay, so frankly, this one pissed me off. Let, let me set the scenario for this one. It's probably the best one. Is that I bought, I went onto the Hobby King website, and I saw they had this little mini Sonic Wing, which is a very, very good model. And I, I think I did my, well, my best to do a well-structured review on that one, because I did like it, and I had plenty of fun that day. Uh, and you can see that it's been on, and it's had a, a bit of a love bite. Uh, me and the little mini Sonic Wing had a fight with a multiplex twin star. Uh, I might have come off worse because uh, he was a cheater cheater uh, lemon eater because he had two motors and I only had one um, so it wasn't a very fair contest and he gave my little mini Sonic win a bit of a love bite which is a bit unfortunate um, but it still flies alright uh, and as we watched just snow fall into the sky uh... <laughs> anyway coming back on the topic great little way uh, but uh, I bought one and I bought some super glue which is uh, ironically next to me at the moment pretty good stuff because I ran out of super glue. Uh, so I bought a wing and some super glue and then realized uh, that I needed actually needed six servos. So I contacted uh, Live Support uh, the morning after, uh, before half past nine and said, uh, can you cancel this order please? And I, I, I want to, well, can, can I add items to an order? And that was not possible because it'd been printed. Uh, and um, yeah, but very, very annoyingly they said, Right, if we can cancel it, we cancel it. So I thought, fantastic, I'll go and order another wing, some more glue, and the six servers, which I wanted. Brilliant. So that was left as what it was. Other order was being cancelled. Uh, unfortunately, we had two boxes turn up on the door. Now, here is the ironic, here is the irony. If I had refused, or if, again, it wasn't me, which was, uh, signed for it at the door, it was Granny. Uh, if, if Granny had uh, refused the order from the parcel force at the door, I would have not been out of pocket, okay? And there would be no issue here at all because they would have just ended up going back to Hobby King uh, and being able to claim for refund fat back, etc., etc. However, because the order was accepted at the door, uh, going through the returns process, they require uh, the box to, or the package to be sent back to, to Hobby King for uh, as tracked. Uh, as a tracked payment method. So sent the missus, right, just go and send that back, make sure it's tracking, so you've got a tracking number. She's gone into the post office, they've charged her 11.99 uh, for Pass Force Tracked, which is obviously um, rape uh, of uh, the wallet, uh, because 11.99 is taking the piss, because uh, you should be able to get that for about four pounds for most businesses, but it does not even go there. Uh, and uh, anyway, so I am now out of pocket by 12 pounds, and obviously, uh, I will most likely get my money back from Hobby King for the, for the order, uh, but I'm still out of pocket by 12 quid. So that has kind of pissed me off. Uh, and I don't think it's really fair to be honest, cause 
it was left as the way it is, uh, and I find it frankly annoying. So, um, yeah, Hobby King, not in my best books at the moment, to say the least, um, but I, like I said, I tried to do myself a, uh, or well, do you, uh, as, 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 as I could do, as far as a review for the actual model itself. Uh, it was, it's a cool little model, I like it. Um, now, actually, there was an interesting conversation, actually, which we had about in the comments about this one, uh, is that this one is technically more than a Wing Wing Z84, and if I had the choice between a Wing Wing Z84 and one of these, I may have actually gone for the Z84, but thankfully I'm not in that position, so uh, it is still great fun, and it's an, it's good fun, as you will see me in the, the review video of that one, or the Maiden-ish video of that one. Um, and really, really good fun. And it will fly in stupidly windy conditions. I think it was about 12, 13 miles an hour wind uh, on Sunday. Uh, and it was almost holding its attitude, or its height uh, in the sky. Uh, so you just power up, just hover it in the wind, and then it would slowly sink back down to the ground. Very, very curious. Uh, anyway, so come back to the topic. Uh, Hobby King, less than perfect. Uh, and that really does piss me off that I'm now going to be out of pocket by 12 quid or 11.99 um, because we had to send it back and as far as I'm concerned it was before half past nine in the morning you've got between half past nine and whatever time the courier turns up which is say five six o'clock in the evening into a warehouse uh, it could have been found and cancelled so I've I'm out of pocket because someone can't sort their own shit out and I don't think that's very fair so uh, you expect some uh, rough end of Matt about Hobby King over the next couple of days because I'm still pissed about it and this was last week. Uh, right, moving on topic, the Reptile at 670. So let me see if I can find this, uh, 670. Uh, and yeah, let me just pop this up on the screen. So I think we were about there. There we go. Uh, and apologies, the chat uh, is off. Let's go to full screen. There we go. So the Reptile 670. Uh, I will do a proper review video on this one, but I wanted to give you a heads up because I've seen a couple of you uh, already in like in the Facebook group, for example, which have got this little wing. Now you will notice that I've had to put some uh, masking tape on the top and the lid's not really sitting down very well. Uh, excuse my taste in stickers. I had to remove all the adult orientated ones out of those stickers which we had here a while ago uh, so we could give them to the kids. Uh, so they got all the, the, the adult ones and definitely do not look at that one uh, there at all. Uh, anyway, coming back to the wing itself. Uh, I do not feel, I genuinely, I genuinely believe this, I do not feel that it's appropriate for us as a consumer, uh, a customer, to have to cut out the whole of the body section to be able to fit a battery in there to then go on and be able to hit uh, the CG on the wing. I don't think that's playing fair. Um, I think that's just a complete misdesign on this model and they've been a completely missed the mark. Uh, one thing, which uh, another flaw which I said back at the very beginning that the motor main uh, was a topic of discussion. Uh, that is the motor main and hence, I'm gonna put my hand over my face so it, so it actually focuses. No, anyway. Uh, you get my point there, um, is the motor mount is a weak point, and that's exactly what we've got here, the motor came off. Uh, the, I don't think it's worth whatever it costs, so right now on, um, oh, uh, hang on, someone stuck a review on this, let me turn me off, main web camera. Uh, yeah, by the way, there is a photo, uh, there, there's a screenshot in the Facebook group of a one star review which has been posted uh, to Banggood, uh, which went in about 10 days ago. Uh, and they have been back in contact. They have tried offering some money uh, to compensate for the lack of good model. And I said, I don't want that, I just post a review. Uh, there's 1,800 people waiting uh, to see that one star review being posted. So uh, we might hear back from them today, we might not. Uh, there's nothing quite like chucking a bit of weight around every now and then, uh, but uh, I, I, it's not a five-star model. Uh, and frankly, to be frankly honest, for the whatever it cost, whichever it was, forty-five dollars, I don't think it's worth thirty forty-five dollars because there's plenty of other models out there uh, which uh, have got more um, more battery bay, like the Blackwing, for example, the Eshin Blackwing, uh, or the Wing Wing Z84, for example. It's got many more properties. Uh, in their favor and again we are very spoiled for models at the moment uh, because there is such a variety out there and there are better models out there uh, other than the Reptile S670 and I feel really bad to be saying that because I had very very high hopes for this model uh, and unfortunately I feel they've been in over-engineered it 
uh, uh, to the point that they made it almost unusable. To the, well, you shouldn't have to get a friggin' hacksaw out and cut the main spar out uh, to be able to fit a decent sized battery in there um, so you can hit CG. Those of you which have already got one of these, uh, the Mark CG, which you can see got pins in there, you can actually go back 10, uh, 10 millimeters on there uh, so you can put your finger the other side and it will still fly very, very well there. So you can push the CG back. Uh, that said, it does fly very, very well in the sky. Uh, the roll's absolutely bonkers on it. Uh, one, again, if you've got one of these already, one tip for you, push your uh, your push rod, sorry, put your push rod, put it down one extra hole on your servo horn uh, because, it's, because it's a very small wing. Uh, the, 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 this wing is very, very sensitive uh, uh, in roll so do push down the, the do put your uh, push rods further than your server control control horn you get more torque and you get less movement uh, uh, on the uh, elevons and actually that's a very good thing because I've only ever flown this thing on half rates uh, half rates and it rolls like a possessed hamster uh, it does fly very, very well. Obviously, it does fly better on forest. And I've got some video footage for you uh, from Sunday. Uh, and it also gets a bit of a smack in the ground as well. Uh, and um, yeah, it does fly quite well. It is, it's, it's a raspy little model. It's a fun little model. It's tough because it's made out of EPP. But this whole center section has been completely over-designed. Uh, and it's frankly let the model down itself. Uh, and as such, um, yeah, it's to the point. I don't think that I just generally think there's better models out there for you. Uh, so if you already got one, you're gonna like it. Okay, it flies great. Okay, but in reality, uh, if you're on the fence about one of these, don't buy one of these. Uh, go and choose maybe a Wingman Z84 instead, because um, it would be better value for money, and you have a similar amount of fun with it. Um, so yeah, not a big fan of this one. I am gonna be removing the components. Out of this wing so this one will be finding a new home at some point in the future uh, because frankly it's um, not met my own requirements for a wing so it's not one which I'm, I'm gonna continue to fly because I've got better models which can be more fun to be really honest and sorry to give you the bad news on that one I, want, I wanted it to be so much more uh, and I just feel that um, reptile over-engineered it on, on a small wing when it would their, their time effort and energy would have been better on a larger wing uh, maybe a 1.2 meter wingspan where the removal of the wings the same like approach which they've taken for that one would have been more appropriate or maybe taken that same approach which they've put in that one and put it into a true version 2 of the reptile s800 rather than just changing it to gray foam and then causing it calls it calling it the v2 right that was a lot of negativity. Let's change things up. Let's move to uh, Shout Out Corner and let's get a chance to, to say good morning to you. And this also gives me a chance uh, to have a quick slurp of some coffee. So uh, let's get across to Shout Out Corner. Mm. Good morning, No Will. Uh, not Will. Good morning, Lauren, Brad, and Crash Copter, Davey, Robert. Uh, Shane is on as well. Elijah, good morning. Uh, Harooms is good morning. Four, good morning. Aaron, good morning. Hola. Uh, Ola, sorry. Sapilla, uh, so we'll quit look who's on as well. Uh, Brad and Lee, of course, are on as well. Roddy, good morning. Julian, good morning. Jim, good morning. Uh, Robert, good morning. Slow Mo, good morning. I'm sorry that you like tea, sir. <laughs> You know what I mean. Uh, anyway, uh, Killer Dave is on as well. Tongue AK is on as well. Ian, good morning. Uh, Elijah, good morning again. A belated but happy birthday for yesterday as well. RC Speed Racers, good morning too. Inra, good morning. Atomic FPV, Alan, good morning. And I'm sure I've missed some. Oh, Andy, you were on this morning. We are on chit chat first thing this morning too. Uh, and scrolling up, I think I've covered everyone. Begin. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. Make sure I've never missed anybody. Uh, and good morning, Robert and uh, Hilbert. Good morning as well. Oh, and Paul, good morning. Almost missed you too. Now, obviously, if I have just been and missed your name, uh, I do apologise. I've just quickly scrolled up and down the list. Uh, and welcome to Shout Out Corner. Uh, a few minutes on FluTube. Good morning as well. Just saw your name pop up down there in the screen. And that is so weird because it's the wrong side. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, next topic, Tom Top and... Uh, what's the other one? Uh, RC Moment skanking 
videos. They've been resorted to skanking videos off other YouTube channels. What do I mean by this? Uh, is that if I get turn my head off the main web camera, there we go, uh, is that does that person there look rather familiar uh, on TomTop? What's going on here? They did borrow one of Andrew's videos. Uh, as I mean, Andrew, I mean borrowed, I mean they downloaded and then re-uploaded without permission to their uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and then if that wasn't bad enough, RC Moment got in on the um, board as well. Uh, now, a curiosity for you is that I've had quite a few offers in the past week or two uh, for freebies to be sent and stuff like that. Uh, and let me just go and check my mail RC moment because that was the last one. Uh, my general response is going very simple like that. Uh, hi, name. Thank you for reaching out. Uh, let's go and get the screen back on. Uh, so a quick look. Hi name, thank you for reaching. I, I'm afraid I do not accept free or discounted products for review or paid reviews on the YouTube channel. All the best for the future. That is kind of the standard reply which they're getting back now. Um, I'm not interested in doing those, what you're maybe used to reviews. I, I, I think I've drawn the line in the sand now. That's where the line which I'm sticking with. So that is where we're going in the future. Uh, it does make it more expensive for me, uh, whereas for example, if we accepted freebie stuff, uh, then it would make things an awful lot easier and cheaper, uh, perhaps. Uh, but it does mean that anything you see, like that one, for example, you know that I bought out of my own money, and the same for that one. I've also been in bought out of my own money as well. So one of them, one of those is staying, and one of them is not. So yeah, which one do you think I'm happy about? Uh, so coming on to that's the topic, yeah. That's frankly taking the piss. Uh, you shouldn't be nicking videos, and Tom Top and RC Moment have been up to that as well. Uh, that's not very play and fair, uh, and frankly, theft uh, of someone else's content. So, uh, not very cheery topics. Uh, let's move on to, let's pick up the pace now. Uh, Nano Talent. Uh, those of you who have been waiting for a kit version of the Nano Talent, uh, if I turn the camera off, uh, let's have a quick look. Oh, good morning, Aussie RC Flyer as well. Uh, let's have a quick look. Get this rid of the stupid menu. Uh, the Nano Talent is out as available as a kit. However, reality strikes. If you consider that by the time you've added three servos in ESC and a motor, you're probably back at the same price as a plug and play kit. Uh, and to be brutally honest, and again, be brutally honest here, the, what was it, the 2204-1870KV motor with a 6x3 prop, which comes with a plug and play kit, is actually very good. I've not changed that at all. And also, to be brutally fair, is that the ESC which they provided was also okay. It's apparently, it's a 40 amp ESC. Uh, I've had it here and I've used it in another model. It works all right, even on 4S as well. Uh, so yeah, not a bad set of components which you get in there. Maybe the servos uh, could be changed out, or you could have more control over those if you bid buy the kit version. Uh, but one to look out for in a cell, for example, it's basically the point which I'm making here. The Nano Talon as a kit, or, or the the actual plug and paint, one to look out in a cell. I really, really do like mine. I have laminated mine, uh, and who for me a model which you can get 30 minutes worth of fpv flight time out of it uh, just by dawdling around and it's good fun i'd like it I, I really do like the nano talent so uh, it was good news that they brought it out as a kit unfortunately the price differential isn't what we expected now that brings us very very nicely on to need to turn the camera off there we go uh, a couple of days back i say a couple of days back um oh about 10 days back uh we did giveaway number two uh which was uh as you can see the woman there with the frying pan i posed you uh the question the simple question uh, explain to my wife why i should have another rc models and i left it out to you uh and i i'm not going to uh, go through all of the replies, okay? There's a link to this in the video description. Some of the replies are absolutely hilarious. Uh, I wanna say thank you to everybody who joined in. Uh, I think that was probably about the most popular post which we've had uh, in the Facebook group. Uh, and there is some good news and there's some irony here for you. And I can't, uh, the misses, and again, I've let the, what I've done, uh, just, just for example, <laughs> the, the kind of stuff which was posted. Uh, in that post, and it literally just goes on forever. 
uh, in there. Uh, and let me see if I can scroll on and you can kind of see what's going on in there at least. Um, Nick Robus, you were the winner, sir. So <laughs> uh, look out for a Reptile S800 with a few extra uh, interesting articles uh, on the way to you. The uh, missus picked it, this one up because uh, that one, <laughs> that made her laugh. That made me also laugh as well. And Nick, there's also another one down here. Uh, from you as well and you can see the wife's been in there too uh, there's Nick there's another one in there which she picked up uh, and she thought it was the most funny so the wife has been and chosen uh, and the winner is ironically Nick Robus uh, and those of you which don't know Nicholas uh, he's from Cell Ahead uh, Airplane uh, Models Cell Ahead uh, Planes who do like the wild thing uh, model etc etc so um, yeah very very um, well done to Nicholas uh, in short Right, next topic, there is a fat munter in the house. Now, we are not talking about uh, what you may be thinking. Uh, what we are talking about is that, that what happened was yesterday is that Dave messaged me on Facebook. You have to excuse me, I'm gonna have a quick pause for a moment. Dave messaged me over on Facebook and said, Matt is in. I was like, what? He sent me a link and it was the full size Sky Hunter. Uh, so I promptly tied fuck off uh, in my, the nicest of manners ever, uh, as you can imagine. Uh, I went off and promptly bought it. Uh, fantastic news. Now, those of you which live in the United States, you've already been having cheap full-size sky hunters. Because uh, there was a deal in the US warehouse for these uh, for $69. Uh, it's now turned up in the EU warehouse, which is fantastic news because $120 is way way beyond my price pain band for one of these uh, and i've always wanted one to come in at a cheaper price point so yes happy days straight in there bought one straight away it's on the way to us uh, really really looking forward to this one i've wanted a full-size sky hunter for a very very long time my issue has always been is that this top wing section and the transportation of the model uh, it's one of those weird models which you probably need to keep in one piece it's not going to be like a simple one to carry to the flight line as many of you have seen uh we have quite a trek to get to our flight line so uh, it's a big ass model and i feel that's a lot of foam for the money so 77 dollars i'm quite happy and once i saw it, it was in the eu warehouse bye 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 and then told Dave that I've probably been aboard it. So yeah, happy days. We have a full-size Sky Hunter on the way to us. Really, really looking forward to it. Already been in the parts bin to choose an ESC. I've already got a motor out as well. Uh, I've also already been and picked out some servos for it too. Some nice little Corona 939 servos to go in the wing. Uh, me and Dave have already been chatting about video systems and receivers uh, and also battery packs and things like that as well. So uh, really, really looking forward to this. I'm uh, not too sure what I'm going to do with the camera mount on the other. Well, no, I actually do know what I'm going to do with the camera mount on the end. I'm going to use um, a little pan and tilt system, which I will show you actually uh, while we're here. Is that got these files from Andrew. Now don't ask me for these STL files for me because uh, uh, all I know is that Andrew sent them to me uh, and they're not on Thingiverse. So I got a funny feeling they were paid uh, files. So let me put my hand there so it doesn't focus on my face. Uh, but that is the little pan and tilt system there. Now this is the one which you've got, there's a servo up underneath there, uh, which turns around, a little free, uh, 180 servo. Uh, it's got a standard cheapo Hobby King plastic crap one on the bottom. Uh, and run cam owl plus and there's space on the top for a mobius or more in my, in my case a run cam 2 uh, to fit on the top as well so that's pan and tilt uh, so we'll most likely be doing that on the top of the uh sky hunter and if you're wondering what lid that's off that's from the xuav clouds which is a project which i'm still working on because i'm also doing a second one pointing backwards as well with uh, pan uh, on it as well so that's gonna be pretty good fun uh, looking forward to showing you that one at a later days uh, good morning by the way speed spain rc as well happy days from spain looking out there the sun has probably already been in rhythm with you it's still dark as you like here yeah? right moving on top uh next topic 
Uh, Ishin V2 goggles. Now, we spotted this one yesterday. It's got posted in the Facebook group literally yesterday morning because uh, I spotted it on the Ishin website. Uh, and yes, how curious. Now, let me go down and choose the black. They've got the black version in there. Yeah, it might be. Oh, sorry, you can't see, can you? There you go. That's better, isn't it? Uh, good morning, Steve, as well. So, Ishin have brought out uh, what are they calling these? Uh, the EV200D, okay, uh, goggles, uh, and um, there's no ETA on these. Well, there's a, a very interesting note, which we're going to see in a few moments' time. Uh, first glance is, what have we got in here? Same battery as what we saw with the EV100s. Uh, we got a fan on the top, same strap. That's happy days. You don't have the stupid gay balance lead, which goes in the side like you got on the fat shot, so that's always a big positive. Uh, let's have a quick look. What else have we got on there? Uh, so we've got the buttons on the top. So that extra button just there, kind of, maybe I'll turn it around that way. Ah, that's better, easier to be seen. You've got two buttons on the top. So that kind of tells us we most likely got DVR, uh, and then we've got channel selection there, and then maybe brightness and contrast, similar format to what we've got on the Fat Sharks. But this is a bit of a weird one. What on earth have we got here? We've got two lots of two antennas, which is... Because of the placement, that kind of tells us we're in like the real AC or true HD or La Forge kind of territory. Uh, because look at those modules there. So, does this set of goggles have two sets of diversity in it? Have they basically just pissed all over uh, Fat Shark in a very good way? Um, it is a bit of a curiosity. Uh, we'll scroll down again, just looking for the details. Where's I, I'm? I'll let you go have a look. It does have DVR. Uh, where's the? It does sort the diopter lenses as well. So I'm sure that'll keep those of you with glasses very happy. This is the bit which is very very curious. Let me uh, max the screen out. Two. Two. Diversity boards. How on earth are they going to work out which one they got? You got what? What have you got? Diversity on top of diversity. Uh, so that's four antennas you're going to have sat on top of your noggin. Uh, that is very, very curious because what kind of setup would you have sat on your head? You could have, uh, you could have a pagoda antenna. You could have a dipole. You could have a clover, and then a flat plate of some form. You could perhaps have a flat plate on one side, a uh, helical on the other side, and a clover, and maybe a pagoda on the other one, or dare I say, even just a, a dipole. Uh, pretty weird. Now, that is the biggest oddity which I've seen in FBV goggles in a long time, and it could be absolutely fantastic, or it could be completely useless. I just don't know. So... Uh, with that said, we need to keep half an eye out because there was a very interesting comment at the top of this one, uh, and I can tell you it won't be, no, won't be me because I won't accept the freebies, uh, is the EV200D goggles will start selling after it's tested and reviewed by experienced users. Uh, if you like it, you can add it to your wish list. So experienced users. So that probably means chances are it's going to end up on a couple of YouTube channels. Um, yeah. That is going to be curious to see how it actually works. My, uh, hopefully they've got a decent uh, field of view. Oh, those of you with uh, EV one, and again, I want to go off topic there now. So let's get back onto the camera. Uh, so yeah, EV two hundred D goggles, bit of a weird one. Unfortunately, we we won't be seeing them on the show because, like I said, I won't accept some as freebies. And um, fat charts are right at the moment. And don't forget, I bought myself a pair of these, the, the EV100s, uh, as some replacement goggles. Now, I'm going to give you a quick mini review on this one. I, like I said, I, I will, uh, with a couple of other bits which we've mentioned here, I, I will do dedicated reviews, but I feel it's fair to, like, to give you like the updated now in the RC Coffee Chat because it may be several days at least uh, before the video comes out on this one because I haven't even recorded it yet. Right, the EV100 goggles. The basic summary is that, yes, the screen is small. The screen is not as small as what some people would let you to believe, and they are also is not as shit as what some people would let you to believe on YouTube. I, that, uh, I'm not going to mention name names, but uh, there has been some very pessimistic views, and I think it's somewhat un, um, uh, unworthy of that kind of view. The easiest way to explain the view in the goggles is that imagine that you're in a cinema 
and you're sat at the back of the cinema and you've got the big screen in front of you. Instead of it being a 6x9, it's a 4x3 screen and that's exactly the view which you got but you don't have people in front of you coughing and splattering everywhere. So yeah, the screen is small, it's perfectly acceptable. I've, uh, again, unfortunately I've lost the video footage from me and Craig, we had a, uh, sorry, I had a corrupted card uh, on the uh, camera uh, and uh, I've lost the footage from the day. But the basic summary was uh, I flew a model, at the, the F1 wing, at over 100 miles an hour with these goggles and I felt pretty safe, except for one issue which Banggood gave me $70 back on, which was a bit of a shock. Uh, is that these goggles will black out the screen on you for about half a second. Now, if I was in here in the office flying a little micro quad around, then a quick split of little flip blick of black on the screen uh, isn't going to be an issue because chances are I'm going to stuff it in the wall or in the light box or something like that in very in, in, almost imminently. Uh, the same if I was flying Emma the quad is that I don't fly that ridiculously fast with it, uh, so a quick little black screen on it uh, is not the end of the world. Uh, however, flying an F1 wing at over 100 miles an hour uh, is that that does mean that you have traveled many meters uh, in that period of time, which is about, is, I wanna say about 400 milliseconds. I, I can't measure it, it is because there's no DVR for this, uh, but it, it, there is a, a black, pop on the screen. I don't know if it's swapping antennas. I don't know what it's doing. Apparently it's a known bug uh, with the firmware, which is on these at the moment. Uh, and uh, if you are flying a model a very, very fast, you will travel a lot of ground and it could be the difference between you stuffing it in a model or not. Uh, so if you are flying very fast models, then these little EV100s could be classed as dangerous. That said, on the flip, on the opposite end of the spectrum, these are the, the, my spare replacement goggles, okay? And this is why I'm saying with that e, those EV200Ds, I'm unlikely to ever own a pair, okay? Unless they're amazingly good and I break my fat sharks, okay? Because uh, I won't accept them as freebies. Uh, but my point being, these little EV100s, I bought two. One is a, a set to give away uh, and another pair uh, to have as a backup goggles to me and frankly else I'm very happy with them besides that uh, I don't like the blackout hopefully that they will uh, release a firmer update now there is some irony in the talk on the Banggood forums uh, is that there was supposed to be uh, an updated firmware being released by the end of October we are now the first of November I checked it this morning it has not been released so that's a kind of curiosity uh, that said they do work great and one big tip and I, I can, is that uh, to make the screen appear bigger is that you cut off a chunk of the foam. So there's some of the foam, which I cut off. Just went round with a sharp uh, craft knife. I've cut the foam off the, the top, uh, and the, it does come with a spare foam, I think, uh, as well. Uh, and yeah, it means that it gets closer to your eyes. And, and ironically, it's made it more comfortable with less foam on it. I don't know why uh, it, it's just been it's it's molded into my face a little better a little bit better. Oh, and do note I did trim off slightly more on the sides than compared to the middle, uh, so it does actually fit in the contour of my face better as well. Um, so that said, it's a bit of a mixed review on the EV one hundreds. Look out for the full review on these later. Um, but like I said, it's a bit of a mixed bag. H has it? Are, are they are they replacements for fat sharks? No, they're not. Uh, fat sharks are very, very good, and I, I, I whinge all day about how much they cost. And I, I will never buy another pair because I think they're just stupidly overpriced, and I call them fat wallets now, uh, to be honest. Um, but that said, the, I feel it's somewhat unfair to compare these $100 goggles to $400 because remember, fat sharks are $350, then you have to pay another $50 on top to have the uh, receiver in them, uh, and that. And that's it. Yeah, I think that's that's very that's why that's why I'm calling them fat wallets now. Uh, whereas these little leashing goggles, I think they're absolutely fantastic. And if you've got them on your noggin, and by the way, one thing actually, a bit of a shock horror is that I've, again I've seen very mixed reviews, even in the the Facebook group, is that those dipole antennas work really well. Absolute shocked, totally shocked, flying in and behind trees. The dipoles worked really well. Okay, obviously I wasn't taking a piss and going below the hedge line, uh, but generally speaking, my 
I was shocked by dipoles. They worked very well. And also, on a practical point of view, is that if you've bought these for, uh, for your kids or even for yourself, compared to the box goggles, for example, these do look much cooler. If you've got them on your noggin, uh, you do look way cooler than what you would do in box cooler. So they also do have the cool factor with them and you've got to give them a plus one for that as well because um, looking cool on the flight line um, does actually count for summit. So yeah, you'll look cooler with a pair like that compared to box goggles. Um, but ultimately you still need to know, what you still need to see where you're flying. So yeah, a really mixed bag on those goggles really mixed bag now look out for a giveaway i've got another one another set of those goggles uh which we're going to do a giveaway on them still sealed in the box uh and we'll do a giveaway on those shortly along with a collection of other balls which by the way is in a stack just there we've got a collection of foam uh, to be given away very very shortly uh steve says jack's getting these for christmas steve they're not bad they're not bad um what was 70 quid well i just got 70 dollars back because i'm I, I, I wanted to make the point of it. Have they got an upgrade? That's what I was really after, was the upgrade. And they gave me $70 back, so um, I'm just not complaining. <laughs> you know, it blacks out. Uh, the short answer is don't fly a model at 100 miles at, uh, with those goggles. I think that's the basic summary, unless they bring a firmware out, update out later, uh, which solves the issue. And again, there was a little note. <laughs> uh, there was a little note. <laughs> Sorry, you can see the chat right now. Uh, there was a little note uh, about some capacitor hack. Uh, to put on the top so i'll look into that later today so yeah very very curious uh let's have a quick look uh slow-mo fpv says uh i think uh let's have a quick look uh i think bg uh, uh banggood are taking lots of flack for the black flash uh the gray distortion line and banding now here's the irony i've only seen the black flash in there there is no distortion in my goggles at all not noticed that at all uh, and yeah, it was just a black flash, and it came from just a, just like a safety concern. I, my, my again, I've, I've lost the footage; it is gone now. Uh, but we flew the F1 wing at over 100 miles an hour with it, and it was just a straightforward safety concern that you're flying like three foot off the ground in something which is doing a ton, and you get a black flash, and you've travelled quite a distance. Uh, is not uh, that particularly safe, but for anything normal, pottering around, if you're up there on sat of a glider or a normal wing ish, you'll be fine, absolutely fine. I'd, like I said, there's a lot of drama queens out there, and I don't feel the reviews, which are the bad, the, there's been overly zealous reviews on it, and there's been overly bad reviews on it, and I'm very much middle of the road, it kind of depends on your perspective. Okay, so that's what I'm basically trying to say. Uh, so Steve's little one, uh, he's going to think it's the nuts because it looks like a pair of fat sharks uh, and Daddy looks like he's spent a bit of fortune on him and he'll be very, very happy with them. I'm happy with mine. I'm happier now. I've got $70 back. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's happy days. Uh, but they're right. They're right. That's what I'm just trying to say. It depends what your purposes are. Last but one topic for this morning, which is Run Camp Fried Rice. What am I talking about? That is what I'm talking about, and I am going to pause now for a sip of one cup. And grab the other mug as well. Mmm. Happy days. A uh, Run Camp Fried Rice. Uh, really, really annoyingly is that. Uh, both my run cams have been playing up. In fact, let's go and change the screen to a slightly different format. Uh, both the, the run cams have been playing up. And what, what happens is that after about 15 minutes up in the sky, uh, is that the lens, lenses would mist up. Um, so when we were flying on Friday and we were doing the back passage... And yes, that really is a location at our flying site called the Back Passage. And we did take rear entry to the Back Passage many times. Uh, and me and Dave together did it. And Dave was filming me and I was filming Dave. And that sounds really wrong, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, uh, on to the topic is that me filming Dave going through on the Mini Talon, I've got the video footage. But the problem is, is that in the middle, like the screen, so you imagine this is my screen. In fact, I'll flip back to the full screen and to the camera, or like the main center part of the screen here, uh, that was all misted out. So you know that I'm going down the back passage with Dave, but 
is all misted up. So this is my, I'm gonna try this solution out at the moment. I've taken both of the run cams apart. Uh, and you'll notice that one's got O and one's got S on it. The reason one's orange and one's silver because they've got two. They're the fun. Uh, Run Cam Twos are the for me the best HD camera uh, out there for size, weight, and video quality. Uh, again, there's horses with courses. Uh, Mobius has got mediocre video quality, but the sound is absolutely excellent. So it depends what your purposes are. But for me, Run Cam Twos are absolutely brilliant. Come back onto the topic. So I've popped them in a little takeaway dish with some dried rice on the side. I've put them in the airing cupboard and hopefully this is gonna dry them out. Uh, so look out for um, uh, an update on this in the Facebook group uh, later this, well, later today, or later, well, by Saturday, should I say, because we'll be great flying on Friday, uh, I'll know for sure. So hopefully that has been dried up some of the moisture uh, inside of them. So yeah, run cam fried rice. And the last topic is completely off topic. So let me just uh, explain what was going on. Uh, I, I don't know what, what I, I've had, but basically I've had a bit of a retro gaming revival here, to say the least. And uh, we were chatting about Super Mario Brothers and a collection of other games, which are like on the NES. Uh, and um, I was a Commodore 64 fan. Uh, and by the way, I found a fantastic emulator. I'll, in fact, I'll stick a link to it in the Facebook group uh, later. Um, but uh, I found this little console, uh, which I think I've still got the box here. Uh, and it's absolutely bloody fantastic fun. That, if you are looking for a Christmas present for yourself or for one of the sort of family menu in which you struggle with, Get them one of these. There's 500 games on this thing, and they are all 8-bit video games. Absolutely brilliant. There is so many hours of fun in this thing. It's unreal. Now, I don't have it here in the box. Uh, the reason I don't have it here in the box is because it's up in the girls' bedroom. And me, daddy, mummy, and the girls. Uh, uh, sorry, me, mummy extra person then uh, and the kids uh, have been up there uh, playing with it it is absolutely brilliant fun absolutely brilliant fun um, <laughs> game number 47 you want that's the better Super Mario Brothers uh, it's got like a quadzillion games on it and they're all like a bit I, I, I'm not gonna say crap because they're not crap they're great fun uh, so if you are struggling uh, for, for a birthday present for someone up uh, there's a link to these they're on Banggood uh, how much are they on Banggood for Hang on, where's the camera? The, the twenty-five dollars. There you go. Uh, I I I just thought they were brilliant. I thought I'm I'm honestly impressed by it. And you can all, by the way, if you don't want to buy off Banggood, you can also get these on eBay as well. Make sure. Big tip for you. Make sure. Can you see it says "Cool Baby" on there? Uh, there looks like there's clones of clones. Okay, it's the Cool Baby you want. Okay, it's the Cool Baby one which you want. Uh, and yes, totally off topic, Dav. Uh, but those of you, and again, the reason why I mention it now is because it's the 1st of November, okay? So plenty of you are buying from abroad, plenty of time for you to get it, especially if you want to go and ship it on to maybe another family member, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, really, really, I've, totally off topic, brilliant fun. Uh, the kids think it's really cool. I think it's very cool uh, and happy days. So like I said, totally off topic. Um, but if you're looking, if you've got somebody who's awkward to buy for, um, and is maybe in my generation ish, uh, is then yes, get one of those, and they will be over the moon because uh, you've got they, just just creep up, just go and have a look at the games, and you go, oh, I remember that, and go for the list. I thought it was very very cool, and the controllers are pretty easy to use, and like I said, the girls are playing it, so good fun. So young and old is what I'm trying to say. Right, time for us to almost wrap up. Now, uh, what's on the workbench? Oh, I, I've, I've got so many models which I'm trying to work on at the moment uh, and like repair and things like that. I'm not, there's no point in me really covering that one with you. Uh, I do have 19 videos here, topics to be covered, okay? Um, I wanna give you a heads up. I am rather busy with work at the moment, so uh, work needs to come first because that pays for models. Um, so I've got 19 episodes which are here pretty much sketched out which I need to get done uh, so I'm not short on ideas for the YouTube videos 
Uh, so look out for some of those episodes in the near future. If you'd like an early heads up for them, a shameless plug uh, for the Facebook group uh, is there's a link to that in the Facebook uh, in in the video description underneath this video. It's free to join. Um, and uh, as always, <laughs> I've just sorry, I've just gone scroll past the really really rude picture. Uh, uh, there's a link to that in the in the video description for you. Uh, and I will do the giveaways in there first. Okay. Uh, so yeah, rag the nuts off. Uh, there is a Facebook group. There is over 18, 1,800 cool pilots like me and you in that group. Uh, so, uh, and of course that's where you get first heads up uh, on anything that goes on, anything which turns up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, what am I looking forward to? I have an SBAC spare on the way to me at the moment. We've got the Zo HD Dart on the way to me as well, and there was a DW Shining Wing uh, 3D model-ish uh, on the way to me as well, which is ironically also being sold by Hobby King too. That does remind me that there is a sale on Hobby King uh, today, their Halloween sale. Uh, I've been through it myself this morning. I'm just going to refresh the page. Uh, you'll have to just have a look on there. Uh, so a quick look. Uh, and um, it didn't look particularly exciting to be frankly honest um, the Raja is the same price as what it normally is the mini Skywalker is you get cheaper elsewhere um, blah 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 go and have a look you'll see what you can find the, the, there was a planes and there was a collection of other stuff I've already had a nose around this morning um, and it didn't look that good so for all the hype which we had uh, it wasn't that great for me anyway that might be different for you uh and that's me being very diplomatic because i'm still pissed about that little wing so it's time for us to wrap up to quickly recap the topics which we covered this morning uh we spoke about the stupidity button from gear best really frustrating i ended up cancelling the order in the end i just got so pissed off of it it was like why would you have a button like that and they still didn't dispatch it so up yours uh not yours but get best uh not power tower pro servers anymore keep watch this space i've ordered six more we'll find out if they are exactly the same as the other ones which i've got here from previous orders uh or not as the case may be we'll take one apart and see what's inside uh hobby king being less than perfect Really pissed off about that one. I'm 11.99 out of the pocket, out of my pocket for that one. The Reptile S670. We had a mini review on that one. Basic summary: If you've got one, they fly great. If you don't have one, unless they're super cheap, don't invest your cash in one. Uh, there are other bottles out there which are better value for money. Uh, moving on, uh, Tom Top and RC Moment skanking videos. I did feel that that was basically taking the piss. Uh, the Nano Talent is available as a kit, but not really at a great price differential. So do keep an eye out for that. Hopefully it goes on sale at some point in the future. And don't forget, in the back of your minds, we do have Cyber Monday and Black Friday sales coming up uh, in this month as well. So uh, I'm sure all the sites, major sites out there will do decent sales. Again, remember Hobby King's sale was a bit shite last year. Um, saying that, I did order two batteries, I think the 250-204S multi-star packs uh, and a quad-core uh, reactor charger uh, off Hobby King at that point in time, which has been absolutely fantastic, I hasten to add. Uh, so anyway, uh, we had the winner, winner, chicken dinner, Nick Robert, oh, Nicholas Robus, you are the lucky winner of a Reptile S800. Uh, I will get some other bits and chuck them in a box and send them off to you. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've already got your address, Nicholas, as well. Uh, oh, we didn't do a review on the HD wing. It's great. There you go. It is. That's the, that's the easiest way to summary. The uh, Sonic HD, that's also the uh, ready-made RC Mako, and that's also the Hobby King Skyray uh, wing. Yeah, really, really good. Just make sure it's nose heavy. If it's, if it's on the CG point, it will death spiral on you. Uh, dirty toad. Uh, moving on, uh, the fat, uh, sorry, the full sky hunter the the 1.8 wingspan uh, sky hunter is now in the eu warehouse for banggood uh, and it's on my screen for 76 dollars 99 uh, i've been an ordered one we've got one on the way to us and um, i'm very excited about that to say the least uh, we had the ishin v2 goggles what on earth is going on with the dual dual diversity what a god for how it works nobody knows but apparently we will have uh, 
EV200D goggles will start selling after it's been tested and reviewed by experienced users. So look out for some experienced users with those goggles uh, in the near future. Uh, and the last topic, well, the second but last topic which we had, the uh, run cam. Try and put, put, putting it in a takeaway box with some rice to try and get some moisture out of it. I will let you know if it works and I'll let you know by Saturday-ish, assuming we go out flying on Friday because it will either work or it won't. And it will be very obvious if it does or, and it will be very obvious if it doesn't as well. Uh, and the last topic, <laughs> like awkward shipping present get a uh, christmas present get one of those they're fucking great um <laughs> i've had so much fun i really have had so much fun with that uh proper retro gaming to say the least and yes max is aged 12 and one quarter at times uh for sometimes very good reasons so happy days so anyway it's time for me to wrap up uh, apologies i've not really well i'm sorry i've not really kept up to, to date with the chat. I will go and watch this episode uh, afterwards myself too. If I've missed your question, please don't take it personally. The Facebook group is always open. Like I said, shameless plug uh, for the Facebook group. I'll put that on the screen. Uh, there's a link to that in the video description. Uh, you can join in there. There's 831 members or other cool pilots like me and you in that group. Uh, and it really is a nice, friendly bunch. However, if Facebooks is not your thing, please just ask uh, any questions or comments uh, underneath this video about anything which we've been uncovered here, uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. On that note, I would like to say a massive thank you to you for joining me here for a two cup RC coffee chat. If you are out flying today, have fun. And also, please chuck a battery in for me because today won't be a flying day for me. I've got a busy day with in front of work uh, since I start in about five, three minutes' time, as soon as I've finished here, to be frankly honest. So, have a great day. As always, from myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to join us for this RC Coffee Chat. And I'll see you the same time next week. Cheerios! <laughs> uh, Speed Spain, Matt, no review of the BMW. Uh, we may have, sorry, going totally off topic. Uh, we may have um, a chat about that. Well, I'll, I'll take the camera, stick it in the car, and we'll have a chit chat uh, about it at some point in the future. Okay. Um, but if you don't know what we're talking about in a BMW, Facebook's group, that's where it goes on. Anyway, for myself, Matt, cheerios. <laughs>